good on audio. Back nope. at it again. Back at it. Bladder's empty. Asshole's empty. Let's get to oh, it. Oh, that was <laughs> brutal. Fires of fucking Mordor were coming out my ass. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> hey, baby. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, and blue. And endless. Yeah. Of, of meaningless noise. The noise that won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking. Screeching and piercing. <laughs> sine, cosine, tangent. What is this fucking math class? I told you, dude. <laughs> like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Uh, uh, load me? I get it. Top of her poem will save me. Load me. I can load her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> uh, I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just kind of thing I'd never really seen before, I get? It's kind of like playing with my space of the paper. Choosing where and how to space their words and could totally change the mood of the poem. It's like magic. The gathering? <laughs> the gathering. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> the way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. Oh, is it? It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> oh, that's not. That's, that's butthead. <laughs> Sometime asking what a poem is isn't about the right question. A poem can be as abstract and physical expression of, you know, feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. So put it that way, not every poem is about something. Or something. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. But just the tip. <laughs> just, just the tip. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. <laughs> uh, okay. You might want to save your game. Saving? <laughs> <laughs> Boss fight's about to happen. <laughs> You'll never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected might happen. Wait, is this still the tip? But there's more. <laughs> Am I even talking about? <laughs> I don't know. That's my advice. Thanks for listening. Ooh. Who should I show my poem to next? Dealer's choice, dude. I'm Dealer's care. choice. I'm all three uh, of these hmm. Well, I can't admit. It is better than the last one. It's nice to see that you're putting in some effort. That's a good one. But I still don't like all of like this at all. Yeah, it's not meant for you. We wrote it for Yuri. It's trying too hard to be serious. <laughs> too hard. <laughs> Mock, get uh, the fuck out of here. Who do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean by that? Poems don't need to be all deep sounding to express them something. <laughs> I almost said someone. <laughs> it's going to just sound like you're forcing it out unless you really don't suck at it. Damn. Honestly, don't bother trying to write poems like this until you're on Yuri's level. Natsuki stops short all of a sudden. Don't, don't tell me. You're not, you're not just trying to impress Yuri, are you? Uh, <laughs> no, not at all. She's onto us, bud. Her babies. What are you talking about? I can't hear right now. <clears throat> you know, 
Yuri would love this kind of... There's angsty. Just because he tells me right doesn't mean that I... Uh, I mean... Uh, looks like I'm in trouble. I somehow struck a nerve, though what I did is beyond me. <laughs> There's that IQ 15. <laughs> I am so done with you. Oh no. Natsuki shoves the poem I handed back over to me. Take your stupid poem. If you wrote it for someone else, just don't show it to me. Uh, aren't you? This is what I get for letting a younger girl step into my business. Oh, so age does matter all of a sudden. <laughs> Unless I was a mind reader, I would. I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least Natsuki wasn't really the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. <clears throat> we didn't even get to read hers. Nope. Let's see what you've written for today. Mm. Mm. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you wreck it? Crunk. <laughs> this one might even be better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? I don't know, it's like we just had to choose 20 words and then the poem formed itself. In two months and put together. Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of technique worth practicing. Maybe that's what? You did a good job explaining. I uh, really wanted you to give uh, imaginary. <laughs> Yuri visibly swallows. <laughs> <laughs> Not now, but <laughs> even her hands appear sweaty. Mom spaghetti. <laughs> Mom spaghetti. Knees weak, palms are sweaty. I'm not. Oh wait. <laughs> I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah. Just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid. But seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. <laughs> I only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. <laughs> huh? Even your cross friends? Hmm. Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it's with you. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the raccoon. It happened in the dead of the night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strained tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware of the raccoon that it fed will always come back for more. The exciting beauty of my cutting knife was uh, the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, and urge. Oh god. <laughs> the moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken the following to me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. That wasn't very dark. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> um. That sucked. 
<laughs> I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more, how should I say in English, metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem's about. That's all right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take a fat value, then I can't even figure out what this is supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something different that people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in more of my unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Be because they're embarrassing. And people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Crunk? Chronic master uh, masturbation. Crunk, <laughs> cr chronic masturbation. <laughs> yeah, I now guess it's I mango. do. I felt like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and their individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. <clears throat> After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a little bit now. No kidding, my voice fucking hurts, <laughs> dude. But I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening, masturbating. <laughs> There really aren't many people like you, Croak. <laughs> nope, not I a can name one. a few. <laughs> the, that's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing. But now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. Uh, is your nothing really? Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. Now, who should I pick next? Eh. Yuri san. Ooh. I like this one, Croc. It has some nice feelings in it. Oh, I'm glad. Does it mean it's better than yesterday? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. <laughs> She has an IQ of 20, just slightly above Kronk. <laughs> I guess I like them both! <laughs> That's not very helpful, you know? Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. <laughs> that's IQ 20 for you. <laughs> I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you at least uh, give it some thought? No? Oh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. No, 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 no. Yeah, I guess so. You're always thinking about other people. You need to think yourself once in a while. If you don't might end up get hurt at some point. Eh? <laughs> Why say many word? <laughs> well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try and keep it in mind. Well, um, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? It's called crazy. <laughs> What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. 
But sometimes when you have a little rain clown in your head, I like sad the most. <laughs> a sad poem can help you give the little rain clown a hug and make a nice happy rainbow. So, so unexpectedly pathetic. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, is it? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Kirk. 